So I'm just going to try and paraphrase this question about um, someone who's very sort of passionate and energetic and they want to sort of go get to a place of more um, a more a place more of peace and you know I also want to talk about people who have the, the savior archetype as well um, mm -hmm. and and uh, the say the savior archetype is is a is you know we sort of say some things are not coming out of uh, being an instrument but they're coming out of the personal identity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, this, and the saviour archetype is something I think is very, very strong within the collective consciousness mm -hmm. of hu mm -hmm. humans, you know, like, yes. don't you know what a wonderful person I am, how much good I'm doing in the world? Mm -hmm. um, and look, you know, and, uh, and wanting validation and, cr and, and credit, you know, don't mm -hmm. you know I'm the best parent? Mm -hmm. Don't you know I'm the best employee? Um, uh, and, and seeking that validation from others. Which is coming from, you know, I mean, I'm not saying, it, you know, the work that's being done is not great work uh, and is of great service, but it's coming from a slightly limited uh, aspect of, of ego identity. Mm -hmm. You know, it can still be very, I mean, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's mm -hmm. coming still from a limited aspect mm -hmm. of the ego identity. Like, I'm going to be the best service person in the whole world and I'm going to, you know, give my life to be of service but really it's coming from the person and there's a thing of like, you know, being sort of like Jesus or being like something like a saviour and but also getting the recognition or also buying certain programs from the collective consciousness like if I do this then, you know, life's going to be amazing if I save the whole world by next week then that's, that's, the, that's, that's it, you know, I am Superman. So. Now the thing with, and also, this, you know, the, the vibration of desire, um, the energy of desire, um, I'm, not, I'm just talking in a general way, is this idea of like, um, when I get to this place, then I'll arrive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, you know, I'm really, really passionate because I'm going to get a four bedroom house by next year, and then I can relax and be happy because I've achieved the outcome that I'm striving for. It's like that emptiness, that, in, that feeling of incompletion will be, will be complete when I've got the outcome. So when I've got the house, then, then and I'm going to strive because now I'm in a place I haven't yet got the house. So I'm going to like, you know, look at a hundred websites to find the right house and call a, a thousand estate agents until this vision uh, this visualization, this thing, this feeling of incompletion, but it's also a vibration of incompletion. So as soon as I get the house, it'll be. But also now, I also need to get the perfect garden for the house, and mm -hmm. then I'll have arrived. And then when you've got the perfect garden for the house, then it'll be because it's still an energy field of not enough. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're always striving. You know, when I get the perfect, and then when I get the perfect garden, and then but when I've tidied up the garage perfectly, then I'll have arrived. But that energy is always. You're always in this energetic like achieving mm. to arrive somewhere which you never arrive because as soon as you arrive there you still there'll be something more to arrive, to get so it's an endless perpetuation of striving uh, and one is in a constant field of trying to get things and get the next thing up and the next better thing and the next better thing so that's uh, so that's the thing of uh, and you know the thing is when you're doing um, one of the things is if you uh, like uh, the one of the ways I do it is like uh, if if I'm passionate about something or I want something, you know, which I I've often shown this room quite a few times now. Like I was really like wanting to buy things on Amazon all the time, and uh, so I go okay, you know, probably um, you're just going to sit with that wanting to buy something and feel out that feeling of wanting to buy now. I want to. I want to buy that iPhone now. Okay. Well, you're not going to buy it because I've been passionate. You say, "Well, I'm just passionate. I'm enthusiastic about getting the next iPhone." But actually, no. Let let forget the thought. You know, because the thought is coming from some idea within my ego that if I can passionately do this thing, then that will be great in some way. So I'll sit with it and feel out that urge to buy the the gadget until it's like I'm in a place of neutrality. 
So then it's like, okay, and I'll, and I'll say to myself, and okay, so you've done that, and maybe tomorrow if you want to buy it, you can buy it because you're neutral now. You feel, and if and then I'll check. Then you know, if there's still an, often, you know, sometimes then I, on the next day if there's still an urge to, well, you're not going to buy it today. You're just going to sit with it until you felt out all the feelings, and if you still want it tomorrow, you can have it tomorrow. So I did this with a, a lot, and you know, my bank account started to increase a lot because I wasn't buying everything that I thought ever, <laughs> so I became richer in that way. But actually, it's the thing of like, what I say is like, it's the, tr it's the trusting, you know, I don't need, I don't need to be personally enthusiastic to get things done. You know, um, if I feel out everything and passion spontaneously arises out of peace, you know, and it's not coming from the identity trying to get an outcome fixed, then for me that's like natural passion arising out of, uh, out of presence, if you like, if, if that makes sense. But if it's like there is an ongoing passionateness with everything, there's an energy field of passion or, or desire or getting things, then I would also sit with that feeling, you know, regularly. Because I seem to be passionate about everything all the time. So then it's like, okay, well that's not just, you know, that's just like, I'm in a field of passion or energy, but then I can feel that out. I can sit with that until there's serenity and peace. Mm -hmm. And then, or I can, you know, if there's passion, what's observing the passion? You know, okay, I want to buy an iPhone now. I feel very passionate to buy it right now, but what's observing that? So is the observer of the thought, I need it now, and uh, the energy of that, I need to do it now. What if, is the, that is the observer passionate? Then the observer is not passionate. So each time I'll collapse that, and then things happen more spontaneously, naturally, and intuitively. Uh, in terms of a work situation, of course you need to function at work, you know, your managers are there and everything. Well, uh, I would do a lot of processing, uh, especially a lot of processing before and after work, and doing, taking breaks during work of what's coming up. So, and not to say that you shouldn't function at work. But often if things are coming up, you know, if the, boss is, uh, if the boss is special, then making the boss meaningless, going to the observer of the boss in the toilets, after he's just said, you know, if you don't get this done by next week, you're fired. Uh, so, you know, uh, you don't want to do the observer right then after he's said you're fired. You just want to, like, funk, be functional and go to the toilet and then, like, feel, <laughs> and then feel it out and go to the observer of your fear and then go and then you know process it and then you'll go from but if you do do that then the state of constant enthusiasm and energy will be much more serene and peaceful the only thing that remember there actually there is on a certain level there's nothing as you get to higher levels you realize that a lot of things that the ego is passionate about are because it makes them special you know, like if I'm if I'm the most incredible savior in the world, uh, then I'll arrive after I'm credited being the the most most uh, famous savior that this world is at. So, so it, it, the ego is passionate about an outcome and a picture and getting all that approval from everyone. So if I go to the observer of that, it become it just totally dissolves it. Mm -hmm. So then things come more from. Uh, a place of authenticity or more from a witnessing place uh, and to trust more things become more uh, observed intuitive and much more serene because I'm not like someone takes out a red pillow and puts it on the table it's not going to disturb my serenity or peace because a red pillow is not a very special tra traumatic object or if somebody says I'm emptying the dustbin you know, it's unlikely to have much of an effect on me. If someone says you're fired, does that have an effect on me? So it's like, you know, well, why? They're both words to the observer. The observer doesn't. Does the observer get traumatized? It doesn't. The observer observes trauma. So if there is a trauma, or if there's a, but also enthusiasm. Oh, I want to. I want to be the best employee in the company by the end of the month and get this, the best employee badge by the end of the month. So. Oh, I'm so enthusiastic, I'm going to be the best employee this month. But then what's observing that? Or if I'm really enthusiastic, yes, last week John got the best employee of the month thing. So, and there's a lot of enthusiasm to be, I'm not saying that's bad, 
but then if I sit with, if I want to let go of this constant state, if I sit with that, then I'll start to get more serene, um, and uh, 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 as well. Often, sometimes, this intuitive thing of, of relating to life is the thing that I do. I mean, here's the thing that I found, is often, um, as you get more serene and observed and more peaceful, sometimes jobs can change as well. So that's the flip side of it. So if you're in a job that you want to keep for life, and uh, sometimes if you get too serene and peaceful, it may not match that um, environment. So you can always hang on to some level of your passion if that's required. I mean, it's, I mean, you know, like you know, I used to work in the stock market, where being in super adrenaline and fear, and being very egotistical was a characteristic that was really, um, ad, uh, you know, you were part of the culture. Mm. That vibration of that culture was, you know, you looked like you're on drugs, you're on adrenaline, and you looked like you'll do anything to be successful, including mm. selling your mother if, if that's needed. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so if you start to get too serene and peaceful in that environment, so, but if I wanted to keep that, you know, go, no, no, I, I definitely have to keep this job, then I could hold on to those characteristics. So you also have an option, you don't have to let go. Um, sometimes, but you know, I've, I've seen, there's been a person that came to this group who had a very high, th high pressure job. And she was like very serene and peaceful. And she was worried that, and you know, the boss really loved her. It was a very sort of like, everyone else was like pressurized, but it seemed like actually then though she was worried that she wasn't pressurized enough but, you know, it seemed the company really loved her all the time, you know, the boss really loved her. It's like, she was all serene in the culture of... of so I, don't, I can't really say for sure, even if you get really serene in a very energetic company, you may still, you know, it may still be good. Um, have I answered? Yeah? Um, 